Dear students, welcome to my channel Need Biology Target 360. I am your teacher Shahin Iqbal and today we are going to discuss the topic Orifera Phylum Porifera of Kingdom Animalia. Porifera is a group of animals which are characterized by presence of pores on their body and they are often called as sponges. These porifera, they have two kinds of pores on their body. Smaller pores known as ostea, which are small pores. And through these pores, water enters into their body. That system is known as canal system. And this canal system is a specialized system found in the porifera. And the entry points of the water are known as ostea. These are small pores and numerous in number. And there is an another pore which is called osculum. Osculum, pleural oscula, and uh, this pore is an exhalant pore. Exhalant pore. So obviously, the water which enters into their canal system, it leaves through osculum, and it enters through a pore which is known as inhalant pore. Inhalant pore, which are called ostea, these are numerous in number. And you may be thinking about that how porifera look like, what these poriferans are actually. These are the animals which are aquatic. So, because of this, their habitat is aquatic, they are aquatic animals, and most of these animals are found in. Most of these animals are marine and except there is one of the family which is known as spongility, spongility, this spongility family is found in fresh waters. I would like to put an example in front of you. There is a sponge known as spongilla which is commonly known as Fresh water sponge, fresh water sponge. This is uh, found in the fresh water. So, this is their habitat. And these animals, uh, you can imagine these animals, they remain fixed to the ground, fixed, and, and they're not, they're not motile. These are sedentary. These are sedentary animals, so that means they've been fixed. They've been fixed at one place, which are, uh, as far as their organization is concerned, their organization is these are multicellular, multicellular. And tissues are absent in them. So these do not have tissues. You can imagine an organism is normally made up of organ systems, made up of organs, organ systems. But porifera, these are not made up of organ systems. They do not contain organs or organ systems. Even they do not have tissues. The tissues are absent in them. Tissues are absent. So what can they have actually? How they are? This type of condition is this type of condition is known as this type of condition is known as uh, you can understand we call this type of organization as cell aggregate cell aggregate so they have a cell aggregate body plan also and number of germ layers 
Number of germ layers are these are diploblastic. These are diploblastic. They have two germ layers. These have two germ layers. And the two germ layers are one is ectoderm and another is endoderm. So this uh, one is an inner germ layer and this is an outer germ layer. Normally every animal has a germ layer and so these are only having two germ layers. These uh, germ layers, ectoderm, it gives rise to an endoderm. This is an outer layer, this is an inner layer. Ectoderm gives rise to the outer part of your body wall. Uh, this uh, ectoderm gives rise to the part of your body wall and endoderm gives rise to the part of your body wall. So that means these are the two. Um, these are diploblastic animals and you can in, in, understand one more thing is so far as their body wall is concerned and sebum is concerned their sebum is these are acylomates these are acylomates. So look at their body wall now. So we have, uh, we would like to see their body wall. Their body wall has two layers. The outer layer of the body wall is known as, uh, you know, this outer layer of body wall is known as pinacoderm. Pinacoderm. And inner layer of the body wall is known as cardoderm. So that means a sponge body wall contains two layers. Pinacoderm is an outer layer of the body wall and the inner layer of the body wall is known as conoderm. In between the two, there is uh, uh, a gelatinous material which is known as mesenchyma. Mesenchyma. So mesenchyma is uh, also referred as uh, mesoglia. Mesoglia or mesenchyma, uh, also referred as mesohyl. Mesohyl, this is their uh, substance, which is a gelatinous substance present in between the pinacoderm and conoderm. Now, let's, uh, if we draw the diagram of the body wall of the sponges, so that we'll come to know how they look like. This is like this and you know outer layer of the body wall it contains some layers of cells which are known as uh, you know this is the cell here and this is the cells this is the cell here these layers of the this cell uh, this is called a pinacocyte pinacocyte this is the flat cell flat cell which is called the pinacocytes and these pinacocytes are they form the outer layer of their body wall and if you look at the there is actually the pore which is known as osteum and this osteum is present through a cell this is a modified pinacocyte which is known as porocyte and you know this uh, this is their osculum osculum and you know this is if you see the cut section of their body wall the inner layer is known as inner layer is known as you know conocytes this is the conocyte and inner layer of the body wall is containing this this is the inner layer which is known as conodome Conoderm and these cells which form the inner layer of the body, this is called a conocyte. Conocyte. This is a characteristic cell of the uh, phylum porifera, or these spawns have a characteristic cell, and this characteristic cell it looks like this. It is a flagellated collar bearing cell. This is the flagellated collar bearing cell. Suppose 
So see, it is this nucleus, and it is flagellum. This is the scholar. The cell is a characteristic cell, and this is known as the chronocyte. And it has a role. It plays an important role in intracellular digestion. And number second, it has it, it excretes, help us in excretion of uh, excretion of. Uh, gel like material, semi fluid material, semi fluid uh, substance called mesenchyma. Mesenchyma. It creates a semi fluid substance, mesenchyma. Uh, this is the mesenchyma here, and the mesenchyma contains, mesenchyma contains the various amoeboid cells. Amoeboid cells are present here. You know, this is the conoderm, and this is the mesenchyma containing the amoeboid cells. Besides, it also bears some spatial uh, needle like structures known as spicules. We'll be discussing them shortly. What are the spicules here? So you can see the how sponges look like inside when they cut their body section, how they look like. And these sponges have inside a cavity, and this cavity is known as spongocele. Spongocele. This is the cavity, so you should not confuse it with body cavity. This is the cavity which is present in them, which is called as paragastric cavity. This spongocele is also referred as para. para gastric cavity uh, and study of sponges is known as parazoology parazoology study of sponges is known as parazoology why because uh, sponges do not fall under the category of eumatazoa they uh, fall under the category of uh, parazoa parazoa so that's why their study is also called a parazoology and uh, from the uh, phylum Sedentrata, we have the animals which are called the true metazoans also, you metazoa. This is uh, uh, in the porifera now you have here in the body wall. I would like to make these things clear to you. Uh, it's a pinacoderm, conoderm, pinacoderm is containing pinacocytes, and conoderm is containing conocytes. And in between them there is a gelatinous substance. The gelatinous substance is uh, produced by cells themselves. And they, it contains uh, spicules and various types of the amoeboid cells, rendering amoebocytes. Besides, I told you one more cell here, which is a modified pinacocyte known as porocyte. Now, we'll be having a look at the various types of the cells, rendering amoebocytes, which are found in Poripera. Various types of the amoebocytes. Uh, which have different kinds of the functions. As I already told you that these are not uh, uh, having a tissue grade organization. These are uh, multicellular. Here, different types of cells have different types of functions. So they have a division of labor. The cells have division of labor. And this condition is called a cell aggregate uh, condition. Here, wandering amoebocytes, the various amoebocytes. Amoebocytes often have ceroporia. So amoebocytes have pseudoporia, and one of the amoebocytes which is present in them uh, is uh, known as uh, you know, trophocyte. Trophocyte. So, dear students, this trophocyte, as trophos means nourishing, so this this cell helps in nourishment. Nourishment. This cell helps in nourishment. How does this cell help in nourishment? It takes the uh, it takes the partially digested food from a uh, collar bearing cell. It takes the partially digested food from the collar bearing cell and this cell 
then brings about the intracellular digestion, then the digested food, so that means this cell takes the partially digested food and then it digests it. This type of the digestion is known as intracellular digestion. And this uh, digested material, then these cells, they help in distribution. They, they distribute to other types of cells, hence they are called nourishing cells. And if they have some surplus food, that surplus food is stored in another type of amoebocyte, which is known as uh, uh, a cell which is known as thesocyte. Thesocyte. A thesocyte is often called as storage cell. This is known as storage cell. So they store the food. That means that if there is, just like in animals, we find that in human body, the extra food, our extra food in the form of the carbohydrate glycogen is stored in the muscles and liver. Uh, but these animals, they do not have organs. They store their uh, stored food material. This stored food material is in the form of uh, glycogen. Because always you must remember that in animals, their the, the stored food material of carbohydrate is uh, uh, glycogen. Glycogen is stored. Uh, in in the uh, in this uh, in the tell cells called the thesocytes, and besides, there's a one more uh, substance that is stored here that is the fat. Fat is also because fat is also stored in the animals. In plants, so we do not have the glycogen. In plants, we have the starch. Starch is simply, but should glycogen can be better called as animal starch. Well, it's uh, better called as animal starch. So this is the second cell called as a thesocyte. Then. We have another, another cell which is present in them is known as archaeocyte. So thesocyte, thesocytes have a role in storage. Now there is a, one more cell which is found in the sponges, thesocyte storage, storage of food. Now we have another cell which is uh, known as, uh, uh, you can understand, uh, they, they are known as scleroblasts. Sclerocyte. Sclerocytes are also called as scleroblasts. Scleroblasts, these cells, uh, these are very important cells of the sponges and they form their these cells, they form their skeletal elements. They form their skeletal elements. They form their skeletal elements. And skeletal elements in the sponges are in the form of uh, needle-like structures which are known as spicules. Uh, and the second thing is, they can be out of the substance which is known as spongin fibers. Spongin fibers, spicules and spongin fibers, these are the skeletal elements in them. But scleroblastus, because you know sponges can be three types. Some of the sponges in them, the sclerocytes of scleroblastus are known as, they are called as calcoblasts. Calcoblastus. These calcoblastus, they are responsible for forming uh, spicules of calcium carbonate and uh, similarly there is so that means uh, calcoblastus they form the spicules of the calcium carbonate and such sponges are known as the lime sponges they are known as lime sponges and uh, these uh, lime sponges, you can understand, uh, uh, they are, this is one of the category of the sponges. And the category of the sponges is, uh, they are known as, they contain the cells called as silicoblastus. Silicoblastus. And these produce the spicules of silicon dioxide. Spicules of silicon dioxide. So these sponges are often called as glass sponges. Glass sponges and the cells are called as silicoblastus 
And then there is a one more type of the cell which is known as spongioblastus. The spongioblastus they produce the protein fibers which are made up of the protein known as spongin protein. Spongin protein. So uh, accordingly, you know, we can have three kinds of the sponges. Uh, some sponges bear the spicules of calcium carbonate, some have silicon dioxide spicules, and some have spongin fibers. And uh, you can understand there's one more type of the cell classification I would like to tell you at the end of the lecture. What's the classification of the uh, sponges? We'll discuss that at end. And another type of the cell which is found in Porifera. And the type of the cell found in Porifera that is known as, as archaeocyte. Archaeocyte. The archaeocytes are the, these are one of the most important cells in the sponges is archaeocyte. This cell is, is, this is called the uh, totipotent. Totipotent. Totipotent cell. This is a totipotent. This is having a totipotency. That means this uh, archaeocyte it can give rise to a complete sponge. This can give rise to a complete sponge means the cell has the ability to give rise to a complete sponge. It's because of these cells, the sponges have huge power of regeneration. So it's because of these cells, the sponges, uh, sponges have huge power of regeneration. That means these are so much, uh, so, so, so intense power of the regeneration is found in them. If a sponge is completely converted into powder and even pass it through a muslin cloth, and then a single archaeocyte, if it's present, if this single archaeocyte can give us a complete sponge. Archaeocytes, besides having a regeneration power, they can also give rise to gametes, and the gametes, they can be sperms, sperm cells, and they can be, you know, ova also, which are present here. The male sex cells are called sperms, and female sex cells are called ova. Both the cells even can be formed from the archaeocytes. And uh, some other cell, one of the cell is here. Uh, called as a gland cell. So gland cells, they secrete some secretions. Uh, gland cells, they secrete, they produce some secretions. Then uh, there is a one more type of the cell that's known as colon site. Colon site, and this colon site, it produces the collagen fibers. So collagen fibers. This uh, this is a colon site, the gland cell, uh, and there is some cell that imparts color to the sponge, and they are known as chromocytes. Chromocytes, chromocytes, they impart color to the sponge. Chromocytes impart color to the sponge, and uh, then one more cell I just would like to tell you that that is known as the myocyte. Myocyte muscle cells, myocyte, though I already told you that the sponges cannot move from one place to another place, but they have the characteristic movements. The osculum also shows movements, and that is because of the contractile cells, and these contractile cells are known as uh, contractile cells. Uh, these uh, are called myocytes, and they help in their movements. So dear students, this was the uh, account of the various kinds of the cells found in the body wall, found in the osculum, found in the mesenchyma, various kinds of the cells that we discussed here. Now as animals, uh, we would like to have a look at their various kinds of the system functions. Just like, you know, if you look at their digestion first. So looking at their life processes, uh, looking at their life process, 
if we look at the digestion, so the digestion and ingestion and digestion, these animals are filter feeders, filter feeders, because uh, only that thing can enter into their body, which is so much small, microscopic, that can pass through their ostia. And that, even that substance, which is uh, very, very small, is smaller than the ostium, that, that must uh, move along with the water current. And water current. And then, what happens? Then the digestive role, the cells that help in the digestion, as I already told you, that the cell which helps in the digestion is the conocyte. The conocyte helps in digestion. Conocyte. So if you want to understand a conocyte, how the conocyte dies, so this type of a digestion, this type of digestion is known as intra, intracellular, intracellular digestion. This type of the digestion is known as where the food is digested inside a cell, it's called intracellular digestion. Now, the other cell that also helps in the digestion is known as trophocyte. And another cell that has a role in storage, already we have discussed this, that's known as thesocyte. And the stored food material is a fat and glycogen granules in them. So this is the digestion. Next thing, if we look at their respiration, so respiration, since I told you that these are already found in water, these how these how aerobic respiration, they respire aerobically, and the respiration is through general body surface by the process of diffusion. So that is diffusion through general body surface. And then if we look at their excretion again, if we look at their excretion, so again, these animals are found in water and they are monotelic. A monotelic. So they produce, they excrete the toxic nitrogenous waste, which is known as ammonia. So, uh, a monotelic, and again, it's excreted uh, by the process of diffusion. This is, again, because of the process of diffusion, the excretion occurs. Now, looking at the uh, process called the reproduction, before we see, uh, before we look at the reproduction, I would like to tell you that sponges, sponges uh, have a characteristic system which is known as a canal system. Canal system. And this canal system is a system of intercommunicating channels through which the water enters and leaves their body. This water comes from outside, it moves in their body, and then comes out. This type of the system is called a canal system. The so canal system is a very complex topic. The, that, that topic, discussing that topic in this, it will be beyond the scope. Uh, I would like to still tell what, con, what, what type of the canal systems are present in them. If you look at the simplest type of the canal system, that will be called as esconide. Esconide canal system. In this esconide canal system, the water enters uh, through ostia and then it goes into sponge seal then through osculum and outside this is simply simple canal system simplest canal system called esconide canal system and the type of canal system is known as psychonoid canal system psychonoid canal system that is a great second canal system it is uh, a grade higher than the esconoid canal system. Here, for example, the water enters through dermal ostia, then through incurrent canals, incurrent canals, 
then you can understand that uh, through prosopile prosopile this is an important structure here that is then there is a radial canal radial canal then there is epopile then there is spongocele and then there is osculum and outside this is uh, the canal system known as psychonoid canal system found in psychon psychon or skypha and then one more canal system is known as leuconoid canal system leuconoid canal system there's leuconoid canal system is again a higher grade of canal system found in sponges and uh, it'll be containing uh, one more structure it may be having three grades further and this will be of a urephilus urephilus then there will be a photo and then there will be diplodal this is the third canal system and there's one more canal system found in the that's uh, found in larva it's called a rehagon 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 type canal system rehagon type canal system this is the details about the canal system of the sponges now we'll discuss their production reproduction in sponges one of the type of the reproduction is known as asexual asexual and the asexual methods of the reproduction in them is one of the asexual method is fragmentation fragmentation where the sponge body breaks uh, into pieces and each piece can give rise to a new sponge then we have one more thing that is known as so this is fragmentation because of the high power of regeneration in them there is another uh, type which is known as budding a bud is actually an outgrowth which is formed on the body and that bud when detaches that's called as, uh, that, that bud is a propagule, when it detaches, it settles down at the substratum and develops into a new sponge. Budding in sponges is of two types. One type of the budding is known as external budding. And the budding is known as internal budding. This external budding, which is also known as exogenous budding. Here, you know, this in this exogenous budding, uh, this is a sponge body, and in this sponge body, a bud, an outgrowth will develop. This. Uh, this outgrowth when it develops, when it detaches from the body, this uh, will give rise to a new sponge. Sometimes the sponges can be colonial in this state. If the buds do not detach, the sponges can turn into colonial forms also. And internal buds are called as internal buds are formed in some. They are their own endogenous buds are known as gemmules. So, gemule is an internal bud which is found in the sponges. And how these uh, internal buds are formed, and when they are formed, it's actually in sponges, these are formed during the unfavorable conditions where the sponge body 
is about to disintegrate inside uh, the sponge's body there will be a small ball-like structures will be formed and these small ball-like structures are known as gemules and if you look at the gemule if you look at the gemule you can see that how this gemule is looks like it has an it has a double wall and a very small opening is here which is known as micropyle which is known as micropyle in between the inner wall and outer wall, there are the sp spicules, which provide them support. These are empty disc spicules, and this is uh, an air-filled cavity is inside. And you know, this this inner side it contains the food-laden archaeocytes. It contains archaeocytes. These are uh, these these gemules, which are called internal buds. This is a gemule with a micropyle with two layers, outer wall and inner wall, and uh, 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 cells which are totipotent cells and archaeocytes. These are air-filled structures. When during unfavorable conditions, when sponge body disintegrates, these small ball-like structures called the gemules, they float on water and. Uh, they are drifted by the water to different places. Hence, these gemules not only overcome in the uh, in the unfair, not, not only overcome unfavorable conditions, but at the same time they help in drifting. They help in the dispersal. That they are drifted by the water to different places. So in this way, the sponges they find new places. This type of the dispersal is known as hydrochoric. This type of the dispersal is known as hydrochory. Hydrochory dispersal. Dispersal with the help of the water is called hydrochory dispersal. So this is their gemule. Sometimes the sponges, during unfavorable conditions, they form rolled bodies known as reduction bodies. Reduction bodies. And uh, as far as the sexual reproduction is concerned, sponges are having uh, their hermaphrodite. Dear students, I uh, would like to tell you sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction. Sponges have, you know, these are bisexual, bisexual, or also referred as hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite bisexual or hermaphrodite so, so imagine a sponge is a bisexual hermaphrodite but you know still there is no possibility of the self fertilization why because the sponges are uh, protogynous protogynous sponges are protogynous what do you mean by protogyny in sponges the both the sexes are present in them but but a female sex matures earlier. Female sex matures earlier. So hence, uh, uh, sponges are protogynous. The female sex matures earlier in them. So making uh, paving the way for the cross uh, fertilization. That means whenever the sperm will come, it will come from an another sponge. Uh, during the uh, you know breeding season, sperms are available in the water, and they enter into the body of a porifera through you know through ostia. Suppose if it is an ostia, this, there will be a sperms will be entering along with the water current, and here we have a cell known as uh, conocyte, and here we have an egg cell here. Uh, this this uh, this this sperm uh, it enters into the conocyte and this conocyte this uh, plays an important it assists us in the fertilization fertilization is internal so this this is the this is the cell called as a egg cell 
This eggs are ova, it's present in the mesenchyma, it's present inside the body of sponge. The sperm, it enters along with the water current, enters into the conocyte. This conocyte, it loses the flagellum, it loses the collar and becomes amoebide. Then it makes a cone of reception here and assists in fertilization. So in this way, when fertilization takes place, we call it as a syngamy. We call it a fusion of the two gametes, a syngamy. It will lead to formation of a zygote. Zygote is actually an embryonic cell. Zygote is the cell which is formed by the fusion of the sperm and egg. And the development in the sponges is internal. Internal uh, development, the development will, be, it will take place inside the body, inside this uh, mesenchyma. Once the zygote is formed, the zygote and becomes uh, uh, the zygote undergoes the division is called a cleavage. Cleavage, cleavage is the name given to the mitotic divisions, or rapid mitotic divisions that divide the zygote, and the zygote becomes the it becomes the blastula, and then the blastula becomes the gastrula larva. Gastrula, the development is indirect in them, so they are having a larval stage. The larvae, two larval stages are found. One of the larvae which is found in the sponges is known as parenchymula. And another, another larva is known as empyblastula. Empyblastula. What is the difference between the two? This parenchymula is a solid larva. Empyblastula is hollow larva. It is hollow larva. So parenchymula is a solid larva and empyblastula is a hollow larva. This flagellated larva it comes out of the osculum and it settles down and develops into a new sponge. Develops into a new sponge. So this was the comprehensive account of the uh, Borifera. Comprehensive account of Borifera. Now, at the end, I would like to talk about its classification and classification. So, classification of uh, uh, porifera it is divided into three. Pilot porifera is divided into three classes. Class one is known as calcarea. Cal carrier. So these are the sponges uh, whose uh, skeleton is made up of the calcium carbonate. Calcarea or calci sponge. And their skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate. So they are called calyx or lime, lime sponges. And then second class is class second is known as Hylospongia. Hylospongia. So, as far as the hylospongia is concerned, these are commonly called as glass sponges. Glass sponges. And uh, their skeleton is made up of the silicon dioxide, SiO2. And then there is third class, which is known as demospongia. Demo Spongy and this demospongy they contain spicules uh, plus spongin fibers. Spongin fibers. So here we complete the classification. Now at the end I would like to talk about common names and uh, some of the commonly found sponges and their names. We have one of the sponge which is known as Skypha or Sycon. The Skypha or Sycon is commonly known as urn sponge. There is a sponge which is known as uh, Uspongia. Uspongia. And this Uspongia is known as bath sponge. Then there is a third, which is known as hippospongia. Hippo
hypospongia, which is known as horse sponge. Then we have one more sponge, which is known as poterion. Poterion is commonly known as Neptune's goblet. Then one more sponge is known as the Euplectila. Euplectila is commonly known as the Venus flower basket. And this uh, sponge is given as a wedding gift. Wedding gift in Japan. There's one more sponge known as Kalina, which is commonly known as Mermaid's Clothes, or also referred as uh, Dead Man's Fingers. Dead Man's Fingers. There is another which is known as Clayona, which is commonly known as Boring Sponge. Boring Sponge, also referred as Sulfur Sponge. There is Boring Sponge or Sulfur Sponge. These are some of the sponges and here we conclude the phylum Porifera with some common names and scientific names. Now, dear students, I would like to tell you, those who are preparing for NEET, the NCRT, NCRT mentions on the page number 49 of the NCRT, the following points of, about the sponges have been mentioned. These are aquatic and these are marine. One of the family is found in freshwater and the diagram of the freshwater spongilla. Spongilla. Spongilla is commonly called a freshwater sponge. Another freshwater sponge is Epidacia, which is also called a freshwater sponge. It mentions about it. The cells which are mentioned on NCRT, page number 49, are conocytes. These are the cells found in them and they have intracellular digestion, intracellular digestion and uh, they have, you can understand, uh, they are bisexual, bisexual, so these are the some of the points which have been mentioned in the NCRT page number 49, marine, fresh, uh, some of them are freshwater spongilized from in freshwater. This is very important point. Conocyte is important point. Interest of the digestion is important point. The bisexual is important point. And another point that mentioned is that they have indirect development. Indirect development. So they have indirect, di they have indirect development Now, indirect development, this is the point that has been mentioned. Um, this uh, larva is found in them and that's different from the adult. And the two sponges that have been mentioned is spongula and cycon. So this is about the points that are covered in the NCRT, which can be asked in the NEET 2020. NEET 2020, the students may be preparing for that examination. So with this, we finish Porifera. If you like this, uh, uh, lecture uh, kindly subscribe to my channel and uh, I will be uh, will be coming with uh, uh, next lectures uh, next lecture will be delivered on the student trader for 11th class uh, thanks have a nice day